Vue.js, the underdog framework built by Evan Yu, which ended up fighting with the big guys and actually had a winning chance. It started as a lightweight alternative to AngularJS. However, with its version 3 release, the Composition API and JSX support, it now looks like a real candidate to replace React as well. During the years, it popularized a lot of interesting concepts such as single file components and one of its main selling point was its fit for progressive enhancement approaches, especially now with the release of Petit View. Also, if you pick Vue for your next project, you'll find one of the most alive and helpful dev communities out there. In this video, we'll take a quick look at Vue's core architecture and features, we'll build a small chat app using third-party libraries such as Vue Router or Pina for state management. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so the setup process is straightforward. You can simply run this npm init command and then follow the wizard steps to choose your needed dependencies. We'll be writing our code in TypeScript since it is quickly rising to the top of all most used languages charts. Next, let's take a quick look at the project structure which should be pretty familiar. In the source directory, any components can be stored in the components folder. View comes with the concept of views which are still components but are conceptually different since they'll act like pages linked to URL routes. Since I added Pinya as a dependency, the state management code can be saved under stores. Finally, the main.ts file is the entry point in our application and the app.view file is the app shell. The version 3 of view is built on top of Vite and the project comes with some other developer tools such as Prettier or ESLint out of the box. As I already mentioned, view made popular the concept of single page components. In the meantime, this was adopted by other popular frameworks such as well. In short, the framework creators decided to give up some of the separation of concern constraints in order to bundle together code that is logically related. So in view, you'll have your TypeScript, your template and your styles all sharing the same file. We'll start by defining our router structure. Routes are important in any single page application and in any correctly architectured project should reflect the state of your views at any given time. Routing is a problem pretty much solved since the Ember.js days, so this is going to be easy. We are able to map any URL path to a view component. Remember that following the standards, these components are actually called views. Finally, we'll be able to extract path variables from the URLs and use regex expressions to catch various scenarios such as the common resource not found. Another core aspect of single page apps is state management. Pinya is a lightweight library which really simplifies managing your state throughout the app. If you've been in the front end space for a few years already, you probably know that us devs can really come up with complicated architectures when managing state. The good news is that, in recent years, there is a trend to simplify the whole process and focus on the results without an over engineered implementation. So, in our case, we can define the state structure, the getters, and the actions all in one file. Just to be on the same page, you can mutate the state data via actions and you can read the data via getters. One final thing I want to do on the preparation side is to add a component library into our project. Element Plus is flexible enough and it will give us access to some existing powerful UI components which will simplify our work. Third-party libraries and plugins must be registered in the app by calling the use function, so always keep that in mind. We'll continue by creating the start view, which is the app page displayed when the user is not logged in. Since this is a demo app, we'll not make any authentication backend request, so presenting an input field for the email and a button to update the store member state will be enough. Note the setup attribute in the script tag. This is compile time syntactic sugar which allows us to use the new composition API in single file components. This could lead the way to a more technical discussion and it would require prior knowledge of how view is written without the composition API, so we'll not get into any details. Just remember that the attribute is necessary in order to easily work in the manner I'm presenting. Using the ref function we can bind the value from our script tag to an input field in the template. It's also extremely easy to bind and modify DOM element attributes and to register event handlers. Seamless DOM manipulation via scripts is the status quo in all frameworks, so I prefer avoiding wasting too much time on this stuff. Furthermore, Vue exposes lifecycle hooks, like most other frameworks, so you can easily execute code at specific times, such as when the component is mounted. Okay, so now that we have our first view in place, we can jump into the app.view file and add the router view component in the template. This will load our router, analyze the existing path, and insert the appropriate view between the main HTML tags. Next, I want to create a simple view component and use it as the app header. We'll not do anything too fancy here, but it'll give us the chance to look into how we can access Pinya store values. The header will also reflect the authenticated versus non-authenticated user states. As a side note, we'll not get into styling and CSS. Know, however, that in the single file components, you can write your CSS in a scoped manner by adding the scope tag. What this will do is make sure that at the framework level, your component styling is isolated and the rules will apply only on the elements in the current template. Plate. Back to the header, I added a drop-down element from the element plus component library and then I'm fetching the member store object. 
In the logout event handler, I'll call the member logout store action to update the authenticated value to false and then redirect the user to the start page. Of course, store values can be directly used in the template and we'll do just that to conditionally render the account dropdown. Once the user is authenticated, he should be able to see the messages linked to his account. In the messages view file, we'll work with the member store and the router again. Furthermore, when the component is mounted, we'll simulate a backend API call to fetch a list of chats which will be stored in a component state. Next, we'll jump in the template section and using a v4 tag, we can iterate over the chat entries and render a router link in the DOM for each of the entries. As always, when rendering list of elements with UI libraries, always use a unique key to identify the elements so that the library can perform efficient DOM mutations when needed. Whenever the user will click on one of those links, he will navigate to the chat view component. The approach here should be familiar by now. In the chat view file, I'm getting access to the router and I'm declaring some internal state values I'll be using in a bit. In the unmounted lifecycle hook, I'm getting the messages associated with this chat. You might recall that the chat ID is sent as a URL parameter via the router link. We can easily extract this ID from the router params and pass it over to the API to get the exact list of messages back. If nothing is returned from the server, we can easily fall back on a generic not found view. Next, in the template area, we'll iterate over the chat messages and pass those over to the chat message component we'll work on in a bit. Note that I'm passing the message as a property to this component using the column symbol. This is extremely important because it will tell view that this is a JavaScript expression and not a static string. In the footer, we'll also give the user the option to add some messages to the chat. We'll bind an input to the text state value and we'll register a key app and a click event to trigger some handlers. The send function implementation is pretty straightforward, but I want to mention a nice little detail view state offers. Inside the ref values, we have access to nested reactivity, so things like pushing to an existing array will actually trigger a DOM update. This is an improvement over libraries such as React, where you need to reassign the array reference for the library to be able to identify the change. When building apps, you should always keep user experience in mind. In our case, we'll allow users to send a message when the enter key is pressed. Next, let's jump into the chat message component and take a quick look at how component properties are defined. Properties are the easiest way to pass data around between parent and child components. Using the defineProps function, we can retrieve the pass data in our script and we can also clearly define the types of our properties to end up with an easy to use component API. In the template implementation, we'll simply display the text message and we'll assign a specific class to the DOM element in order to correctly style the send and receive messages. So this pretty much sums up our quick incursion into the Vue.js world. This is a short video which doesn't really do justice to how powerful and flexible Vue.js is. I already mentioned a strong community behind it and you'll be able to find a lot of Vue-focused channels such as Vue Mastery on YouTube. Furthermore, they have a well-written documentation, so if you have a couple of hours to spare, I advise you to go through it. With its version 3 and the Composition API, Vue takes one step towards the development experience React offers. It was previously viewed as a real alternative to Angular, but now I can see it easily replacing React as well. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.